Fresh meat. Try as they will. And try as they fight. Whose deals we go. Won't live through the night. <laughs> Recently turning 29 years old, Leprechaun is a product of the 1990s through and through. It has it all. A killer with a gimmick. It's not nice to make fun of a leprechaun. People making bad decisions. What? What? And a future A-lister. So funny. Those who love this film really love it. And those who hate it really loathe it. It's a love it or hate it kind of film. And given how many sequels, and a remake it has spawned, it's clearly been unstoppable. So we're diving into the killer at the end of the rainbow in today's Awfully Good. Go, go. So now you're a leprechaun, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> so what exactly is this crazy film about? Well, after a couple smuggles a leprechaun's gold into the US from their home in Ireland, bad luck befalls them and they are forced to fight for their lives and lock the being in their basement. Years later, a teen girl's father brings her to the house that he's just bought for a summer of bonding and house repairs. Oh yay, a teen girl's dream. As soon as she gets there, young Jennifer Aniston shows that she's a spoiled princess and wants nothing to do with the house. This is worse than summer camp. That is until standard early 90s handsome handyman shows up. You really think I'm afraid of a little dust and some bugs? Now, this handyman doesn't come alone. Oh no. For some reason, he has two sidekicks. One kid who knows too much. Boy, I can go for a beer right now. And one adult who knows too little. Came right down out of the sky. Saucer. The kid looks like a knockoff Lawrence brother, and the other guy looks like Andy Richter's distant cousin. And why exactly are they there? Are they really necessary? Well, maybe. They balance each other out and are clearly added for humor and plot advancement when needed. They also exist as the way for the film to do exposition, without making it sound like Aniston and Mr. Handyman are big old dummies. Before too long, they free the leprechaun by accident, and surprise, surprise, he's not a happy fella. As it is, he still wants his gold back, and he's willing to go to any means to get it. Thanks for watching Awfully Good, and ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now, like this video, and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. And now, back to the show. The newly free leprechaun wastes no time getting to the killing and spewing of one-liners. This old lep, he played one, he played pogo on his life. Between his facial situation, his one-liners, and his propensity to kill joyfully, he comes across as a bit like Freddy Krueger and Chucky mixed. Horror and slasher fans ate it up at the time, and still do. Now, is it for everybody? No, of course not. But it should be seen by everyone, preferably in a randomized order with all of its sequels and its remake. Because why would you not want to get more of this sweary Irish charmer? And had me gold, you thieving hoods. You got more loot than Tiger Woods. <laughs> it's also a great film to bring up to your sister. Or cousin, friend, significant other. Really anyone that doesn't think Aniston did anything before friends. And <clears throat> pre-nose job. Coincidentally, a little bit like Courtney Cox in Masters of the Universe, Aniston does her best here, and she really puts her heart into all of her scenes. Walking at that door, and I'm not coming back. Or something. A little too dark out there. Now, she's not the star here. Well, she kinda is. But really, this film is all about the titular character. Why, I'm a leprechaun! Played brilliantly by Warwick Davis who is clearly having a blast, and that counts for a lot here. After playing sweet-natured Wicket in Star Wars and Willow, as well as a magnitude of other magical and fantastical parts, he gets to let loose and really play evil with a wink. Let's be honest here, he makes the film and the series what they are. He's the center of it all, and he makes it worth watching to the end. Without him, who knows if it works. <laughs> Now, is any of the above worthy of any Oscar? No way. But, is it worthy of about 90 minutes of anyone's time? 
Absolutely. 1993 may have seen classics like Jurassic Park, Hocus Pocus, Jason Goes to Hell, Mr. Nanny, and The Crush get released. But if you ask anyone about those movies, you know they'll bring up the much better Leprechaun. No? Just my group of friends? Okay then. Now, a full Leprechaunathon may not be something everyone has the gumption for, and those sequels may not end up watching themselves. But the first one is an easy one to find and to give a bit of time to. Now, if you want to watch all the sequels as well, there are some nice options there, but none of them come fully endorsed here. We wouldn't want to be held responsible for the results on anyone's sanity. Except for Leprechaun in the Hood. That movie rules. Now, if all of this hasn't sold you on the film, let's go over a few of the greatest hits. Spoilers within, of course. The Leprechaun is a nasty, yet comedically inclined fella. Asses, asses, we all fall down. <laughs> if you need more examples of his wordplay, just check out any given scene that has been making the rounds since 1993. In a year filled with stiff competition, this one doesn't aim at high quality computer effects. It sticks to the ooey gooey gore and the fun blood that appears in decent quantities here. Jennifer Aniston pre-fame. Yeah, it's been said, but it's something else to see it with your own eyes. She gives her all and flirts with handyman Nathan while being a complete pain in the ass. That's cut up dead cow. Hey, and that's if you're lucky in this place. Her fashion sense here will bring some serious memories to those who survived or lived through the 90s. From the patchwork jorts to the LA gear sneakers, She's a proper representation of the Tiger Beat reader of the era. Don't remember Tiger Beat? It made Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Jonathan Brandis, and Devin Sawa household names at the time. Aniston's surprisingly small flip cell phone. For a moment, it will make you wonder if this is from 1993 or 2006. The shenanigans of a child trying to get rich and also survive who somehow has more logic than the adults and happens to be wearing a toned down version of a good guy's outfit. Was this an accident? The use of a decoy Lucky Charms box as the parent company for the brand had given consent for their use until they saw the film, so they paired it with one of the closing lines as something to watch out for. Fuck you, Lucky Charms. A truly, honestly, greatly enjoyable dark, dark sense of humor. I mean really dark. Give him the gold, Dan. He's a nice little leprechaun. Like seriously, this is great stuff. The many ways the leprechaun will kill to get his coins back. His gold is gold his gold. They've got me coin. So how did this film end up working out and becoming a greatly entertaining piece of cinematic schlock? Well, the cast. They not only take the material seriously, they aren't afraid of looking like idiots while going through it all. And they give performances that work well here. We go there. We gotta go there right now. We gonna get there. Jeep. Sure, the performances are not great, but they are enjoyable. Everyone here seems to be having fun in one way or another. Jennifer Aniston is a big draw to this these days, but at the time she was mostly unknown, especially horror fans. Now, Warwick Davis had a bit of a name in the dark fantasy world and in sci-fi, so he had a little bit more appeal. These days, most film fans know who he is and know this part in particular as one that marked his career. He starred in this one and the next five sequels, something that is quite the feat, but also something a bit expected of slasher actors. He is the Leprechaun, and the Leprechaun lost a bit of appeal when they replaced him. While the film is violent, some will notice a clear lack of nudity, which here is not even an issue. It should be noted that the sequels handle quite a bit more sexual situations and in varying degrees of effectiveness. So perhaps this is not the series for gratuitous nudity and makeout sessions. Here there is a potential romance, but it soon gets tossed aside so that the story can move along and everyone can flee the killer fella in as many ways as they can think of. Now some reading this will think that a leprechaun film is something perfect for a St. Patrick's Day watch with their favorite Irish whiskey or beer. So pull up your drink of choice and try these potential drinking games. And be careful, some are bound to get people drunk faster than others. 
First, we've got the lightweight. So 90s. Take a shot every time something so 90s it hurts is on screen. These are easy to miss in some cases, so it's not too dangerous of a level. Hey, hi, I'd like to make a reservation. Hold my beer. Every time a reference to gold is made, take a swig of beer. If you want to drink a little less and be a little more precise, drink when he says me gold instead. Sounds like me gold. <laughs> the Irish. Take a shot or a swig of something Irish every time shoe buckles are brought up, as well as references to Ireland, Lucky Charms, really anything that's stereotypically Irish. Warning, you may die. There are plenty of other options here, and it would be easy to get really drunk off of this movie. So for those with a weaker disposition or less of a taste for alcohol, perhaps a tasting menu should accompany the film with Irish soda bread, meatloaf, watercress salad, or some off-brand Lucky Charms. All in snack portions or done in a way to accompany the whole series in a marathon watch. Now, as you imbibe, or don't, your choice, there is plenty to look for in the film, including the makeup effects that were actually nominated for a Fangoria Chainsaw Award for Best Makeup. We won't mention that it actually won for Worst Film at the same ceremony. Oops. Once done watching, there is plenty of trivia to pull up on this film. This was originally planned as a straight-up horror film, much like the original Nightmare on Elm Street, and a little less like Freddy's Dead. The shift in tone came from Warwick Davis, and it's a good change because the humor is what saves Leprechaun from taking itself too seriously. George Lucas has a thanks credit for allowing Davis to go work on this film while still under contract to him. And oddly enough, Vice President Quayle helped Davis get his work visa. Jennifer Aniston used to be entirely embarrassed of the film, but now considers it her first film success. The film was written in 1985, shot in 1991, but only released in 1993. The lead character was inspired by the Lucky Charms Leprechaun, only twisted to be able to make a low-budget horror film. One of Warwick Davis's stunt doubles for this film is Tony Cox, who has been involved in more than one holiday film, including Bad Santa and The Hebrew Hammer. He also appeared as his own character in Leprechaun 2. Look for makeup artist Gabriel Bartolas, creator Mark Jones, and out of makeup Warwick Davis with his wife in the cafe dinner scenes. So why is this awfully good? Well, it pretty much expected to fail, and it's become a cult classic in its own right. The leprechaun has personality, he can be darkly funny, the kills are pretty good, and it has a young Jennifer Aniston as one of those memorable final girls. It's a fun movie to watch with friends, with or without a drink in hand, and it has a ton of quotable one-liners. I'm okay. I just got a little clink in my neck. Is the leprechaun as timeless as Freddy or Jason or Chucky? Maybe not to all, but to some, he absolutely is. The fact that the most recent film in the series came out in 2018, sadly without Warwick, is a testament to the lasting effect of the original on both its viewers and the studio. Little girls shouldn't look for four leaf clovers. Let us know what other movies you think are awfully good, and we'll see you in the next video.